Number five from the 2016 Advanced Higher Maths. Here we go. Proof by induction. And you think, OK, it's just one of these summation formula ones, but it's only four marks. And you know you've got to write all of that stuff down, as well as do the wee bit of algebra. Now, don't just try and expand this using your summation formulae, because that's a direct proof and not a proof by induction. No, you're going to have to go through it all. So the first thing is to show that it's true. So you have to demonstrate, or you could say, show true, sometimes you just say n equals 1. Now that means working out both sides and not just stating the result. Yes, there's lots of writing. So that means you take the left-hand side, this side here, and say, what have you got if it's a 1? It'd be 1 times 3 times 1 minus 1, which equals 2. Similarly, the right-hand side would be 1 squared times 1 plus 1. 1 times 2 is 2, which means the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. I don't see that in the marking scheme, but the important thing is I now have to state it's true for n equals 1. And after you've done all of that, you get your first mark. Now the inductive hypothesis. Assume true. It may not be. Assume it is true at some point n equals k. So what you can't say is true for n equals k, or consider n equals k, or even worse, just assume n is equal to k, which is just a change of name. Assume it's true for n equals k, well, that would mean that in this one here, now you've got to write all this out. Oh, I remember it's just the n's that are getting replaced, so that'll be r is 1 to k, but it's still r. 3r minus 1, but that will be equal to k squared times k plus 1. Now normally that would have been worth a mark. Then the next thing you do is, and I'll just give that a name because you have to call in your inductive hypothesis into the proof. And then the next thing is to consider what happens. Consider n equals k plus 1, which means you're considering this. r equals 1 to k plus 1 of r times 3r minus 1. But even yet, you're not getting the mark until you've actually written out what this means. So it's a summation. If it's a summation, split it into two bits, the big bit and the wee extra part. If it's a product, you split it into two parts, the big bit and just the extra term multiplying it. So that means it's going to be this part, r equals 1 to k, in other words, just the part you had before of th r times 3r minus 1, but plus the extra last term when finally r becomes k plus 1. So this is the term that becomes that. So r becomes k plus 1. So it's k plus 1 times 3 times k plus 1 minus 1. And only now, after you've written all that out, do you get your second mark. Now, you have to call in your inductive hypothesis. So bringing this in gives you this k squared k plus 1 plus k plus 1 times, I'll just multiply that out, 3k plus 3, so it's 3k plus 2, because it's 3 minus 1. Now, calling in, or you could say using 1 here, because that's when I called it into play, you have to call it into play. Doing that gets you the third mark, there's only one mark left and you've not even demonstrated the results yet. Now, this is the sort of standard way, I want to go through this until I end up with this expression again, only instead of n, it's got k plus 1. You do have a sort of less adventurous alternative, which is to expand this into a, a big polynomial, power of 3 obviously, expand that into a big polynomial, have that as your aim, and then say, oh, I've achieved my aim, you could do that, but I prefer to be more rigorous and just take this expression and rearrange it to get k plus 1s in it. And there are k plus 1s in it, so that comes out. k plus 1 times, and I'm left with a k squared here, and a 3k plus 2 here. So that becomes k plus 1. You've still not written the big spiel at the end for the final mark, and you've got to do this as well. And that factorises factorizes to k, k, obviously 1, 2. And there you go, because that's k plus 1 squared, and that's k plus 1 plus 1. You have to actually state it formally that way, show the k plus 1's appearing, which is the required result. Still not getting a mark for doing that, but you need to get that. You have to explicitly have that stated in terms of the k plus 1's. 
unless you went for that route of expanding that to a polynomial, expanding that to a polynomial and saying, oh, my result equals my goal. Sometimes you add on to that required result for n equals k plus 1, but it doesn't seem to ask for it here. I prefer that at the end. I'm running into it because of this wee thing here. Equals required result, but there's no need to put this down, there's no marks for this. Required result for n equals k plus 1. An awful lot to it. I've still not got the final mark until I make my final statement now. So, what this bit proved was, if it were true for n equals k, then it's certainly true for k plus 1. So you can put that down. If, or sometimes you just say true, if it's true for n equals k, that meant it is true for n equals k plus 1. And then since it was true at the start at n equals 1, that means by induction, this is the final mark. By induction, it's going to be true, and then you can just use your shorthand. True for all n out of the natural numbers. Then you get your last mark.